The Hunger Games swept the world into this frenzy. I think part of why everyone loved it was this idea of this controlled coliseum type of death match that we we can say that that's evil, but I think we all tuned in for it. Well, today I want to talk to you about a different book that had a similar type of thing going, um, but in a very cool, different way. Today I'm talking about Red Rising by Pierce Brown and why I blew through this book in a matter of days. Okay, so let's get the basics out of the way. First off, it was published in 2014 by Pierce Brown. This is a science fiction dystopian story, uh, but it's not your classic like YA dystopian story, like at all. More space opera y meets just good old fashioned Shakespearean tragedy. Pierce Brown said that when he was writing the book, he was inspired by the plight of the Irish. Uh, immigrant population in the 19th century and kind of their disenfranchisement with just the society that they found themselves in. So here's the deal. Uh, this story takes place in the future, well into the future, but still within our solar system. All right, we're at a point where humans have gotten very good at an advanced form of terraform technology. So they have managed to like recreate Earth living environments on different planets. Elon Musk, take note. The main character is a teenager named Darrow, and his job is to work deep under the ground on Mars to mine the elements that make it possible to do this terraforming. At first, when I was getting into that, I was like, okay, so this is kind of like the book Dune all over again, um, but I quickly got past that. Through a sequence of events, we see Darrow kind of come to a conflict with this future universe's type of social caste system. With all this advanced technology, a new social caste system is formed, and each caste is assigned a different color. Red being on the very bottom, gold's being at the very top. Uh, Darrow is a red. He's mining. He's kind of the bottom of society. Hence the title Red Rising. Before you know what's happening, you find yourself in this insane version of the Hunger Games. But it's like the Hunger Games meets all the military strategy focus of a book like Ender's Game, you know, where Ender is stuck in that going to train you military tactics society. But it, it preserves this idea of all these people in contest in a closed arena. And in that arena, Darrow has to find a way to climb to the top, um, even though his opponents can outmatch him physically, and have also been trained mentally to outsmart him for their whole lives, because they're golds. They've been training for this arena for a long time. So in that way, it is like Hunger Games, where they're kind of in this closed death match, but it's unlike Hunger Games, like a lot, in a lot of ways. It was first introduced to me by a friend who said it was a more mature version of Hunger Games. And I thought, well, there's some mature stuff in Hunger Games. Boy, was I naive. So first off, uh, full warning, this book is, is, has some pretty mature content to it. Pierce Brown doesn't shy away from the violence and the, the explicit language that, you know, a bunch of kids that are thrown into a death match may, may face. It also has some explicit Lord of the Flies type of barbarian different groups competing for the top through some atrocious acts. It's a macabre story in a lot of ways and you keep reading because there's a dark piece of you that's just interested in seeing how human beings can be manipulated in that type of way. In the Hunger Games you basically have a lot of individual kids competing to be the one lone survivor but in Red Rising you have whole different factions competing against one another in this group deathmatch scenario and that's going to open up the door to a lot of things that the Hunger Games just couldn't touch. From a storytelling perspective it's easy to help characters preserve their sense of humanity when they're just kind of clinging to this idea of I can still be myself. But when you put them into groups of you know 10, 20, 30, 40 a whole different mini social ecosystem evolves inside of the arena. The games in Red Rising also last much, much, much longer than the games do in The Hunger Games. So in Red Rising, all these factions are competing to be the top faction. Um, so there's social warfare, there's military strategy going on at play uh, in some major ways. Plus there's some technological handicaps that they give the different teams. 
uh, which made me feel at points kind of like I was watching a really intense version of Sid Meier's Civilization game. There are a couple of other things about Red Rising that I found particularly enjoyable. First, Pierce Brown uses Roman mythology and ideology to lend a lot of weight to his narrative. In the story, the Golds have basically preserved this feeling of Roman culture and brought it along through these hundreds and hundreds of years ahead of where we are now. And because of that, you see Roman influence all over the place, not just in military strategy, but even in the names of the characters of a lot of the Golds which is kind of cool to see like Pox come up or like Cassius. It's like a uh, new Marys with the ancient too. I, I, I get turned off sometimes by books that get too sci-fi. You know what I mean? They're like too much into the science, too much into the tech, so much so I almost feel like I'm reading a scientific dissertation or something from this author. Um, and Pierce Brown does a good job at not getting too much in the weeds with that. There is a lot of advanced technology, but it's there just to help the story move along. It's not there just to be complex for complexity's sake, which I think is a pitfall that a lot of sci-fi and fantasy authors get into with their world building. Um, this world building feels you wanting a little bit more, which is a huge welcome change if you read a lot in this genre. And then finally, I think the book does a fabulous job at creating cinematic action-packed sequences that show all the excitement of this type of warfare and this type of, you know, almost like an action movie, but it does so without glorifying the violence. In fact, the book is written in first-person present tense, so you're right inside the main character's mind experiencing things as they happen. To me, that's the most intimate point of view you can write in. And every new decision that this guy has to make, every new horrific thing he has to do or witness or whatever, it starts to just weigh on him more and more and more. And you see that baggage accumulate. It does not glorify the violence. It shows you the mental costs of the violence. And you're left almost wondering, how much can this hero take? Yes, he's doing these things in the name of something good, but can anyone manage to carry all of that? Uh, so that is a really cool dynamic that makes you feel not just like you're just seeing people stab each other. Now here, it's when somebody dies, it is in your face, um, but it also leaves you with some terrible wounds yourself. So anyway, I do recommend this book. Again, if you are squeamish, uh, if language bothers you, I would not get into the book, but... It is a very gripping tale and is very exciting. I, I read it in a matter of days because for some reason I just couldn't seem to put it down. If you've read Red Rising, let me know in the comments what you thought. Am I the only howler out there or are there others? I know there have to be others. And hey, if you like this video, make sure to hit subscribe so you don't miss the next one. I'm going to get back to writing my own book draft. I hope that you have a wonderful week. I will see you next week. Thanks for watching.